get him! What the fuck? Come on, man. I didn't even hit you that hard. God damn. Tools are a key aspect of GTFO gameplay, so today we will learn about them. They're not too complicated and they're super easy to pick up. So let's start, shall we? Mines are pretty simple. You put them down, they blow up. They're mostly reserved for doors since they are the most effective there. And this height chart is just here to represent how tall some enemies are since they come in various shapes and sizes. Giant mines are usually reserved when out in the open since you can have a situation which one sleeper can kamikaze into the mine and wasting the mine. If no props are in front of the door, I use a cross shaped mine placement, which is really consistent. If you can, you should put mines facing the door since that's the most effective way of killing enemies. Same rules apply to siphon treat mines, which can be used to siphon doors. This is a reenactment since I did not find a siphon trip mine for the life of me, but you can put the siphon trip mine on the door button to see from the door while it goes down. If placed correctly, mines are the best tool when clearing waves of enemies pushing into your position. It's literally a delete button on really short scans. The Seafoam Launcher is your delay tool, you can reinforce doors and freeze enemies with it. When you throw it at the door, it basically gives it an extra layer of health. Each bubble can tank 2 hits of sleepers when they're breaking the door. If you wanna go through the same door that you chose Seafoam, you have to completely remove the Seafoam out of that door. Even if it's not nearly as effective, putting sea foam on the floor helps freeze enemies in place. One bubble usually splits into two or three when on the floor, so you should put them in choke points or in places where you know sleepers will path on. You've probably heard the term permafoam. It's literally keeping the sea foam layer up as much as possible. You try to keep up with the door hits, replacing each bubble one at a time until the objective is done or you run out of Seafoam. This is mostly reserved for alarms that are long, like a class 5 and up, or in rooms that are really difficult to defend, like a really small room or a really bad choke point. This can come in clutch every once in a while. You can Seafoam enemies in stealth to get an easy kill. Enemies turn deaf and walk through. So regardless of the noise you're making, after the effect is done, they won't trigger at all. This is a little data sheet that I made for you guys to see how many bubbles and the amount of health that the doors have. Okay! Burst Sentry is the most versatile out of the bunch. It has good stagger, it can super small enemies from the back, and it works in all situations regardless if the room is small or big. This Sentry, along with the Sniper one, benefits from open areas since they can pull the 2 time damage better than the other Sentries. What Auto Sentry lacks on damage, it compensates with Stagger. This Sentry, just like Shotgun Sentry, is better suited for choke points, like small doors and a bullhead entrance, to get the most value out of it. You don't really want this Sentry facing their backs, since its main purpose is to Stagger, then deal damage. 
Sniper Sentry is the most kill efficient sentry inside the game as of right now. He can one shot anywhere, small and medium sized enemies, and with the back damage, he can two shot giants from the back. The only drawback this sentry has is the initial shot, it goes off after 4 seconds of targeting, and after that, it takes 2 seconds between each shot to fire. The shotgun sentry is not as good as it was before since they finally patched the bug where it got more damage per player on the lobby. Once they add this sentry back into the game, mix and matching sentries will be really fun, so we're gonna see what happens there. But for what I remember around 3, he was mostly used to chip away the enemy's health so you can finish him off while you're defending your teammates who are doing scan. And just like the auto sentry, it's better to put it on choke points or on doorways because the spread on the shotgun is really big and also the damage drop off starts la at like 4 meters I think. So you really have to be optimal on your sentry placement with this sentry. To wrap up the sentry part of the video, I am just wanna add to please do not put sentries outside of a door because that just wastes too. If you put a sentry behind a door that you end up permafoaming anyways, you're gonna waste all the ammo on that sentry and that sentry is gonna trigger another wave if it kills enemies fast enough. You'll be wasting double the resources if you're putting a sentry behind the door. This is what a setup will look like in game, give or take. I forgot to put this in the mine section of the video, but you can cancel the speed debuff when putting mines down. You just start running at about 80% when the bar almost fills up. Just remember when you if you're in a rush or getting pushed by enemies, you can misplace the mine by accident and probably kill yourself or your teammates in the process. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.